Hi guys, Rich here from Mid Wales Plum and Heat Supplies. Hope you are all good. Today, I'm gonna to go through a video, which is a bit of a crossover video using a Mixergy heat pump interface kit and an Eva home system. So why are we doing this? What are we doing? So we had a slight issue with a customer who was trying to get their Eva home system to work with a Mixergy cylinder. So Mixergy suggested one way of doing it and we wondered if the heat pump interface that we already sold uh, would also work fine with the Eva home gear. So we've been doing Eva home for many years. So we normally use the CS92A sensor as your domestic hot water sensor. But we wondered, because it is an NTC sensor, we wondered, would it work with the mixed G heat pump interface? So although Evo isn't a heat pump, we wondered, could we use the resistors inside the heat pump interface to actually get Evo home to work and switch with it? So we have a heat pump interface. If you've never seen one before, they basically work on the principle that they have an input. So they have a 230 volt input here, which comes from the mixer G cylinder. So this is just replicating that. So it goes onto the NO um, of the indirect. So if you look at the NO terminal, the normally open terminal, it goes onto there, okay? So when you get 230 volts, go onto there. What you then get off the mixer G cylinder is a demand signal for this to switch, okay? So in that, that is a call for heat. So what happens then is there's two resistor banks. One emulates the, a, a cold temperature resistance and one emulates a hot temperature resistance. So it's, it was a case of finding which, which resistors worked with Eva Home and whether we could replicate a cold demand and a hot then satisfied. So we have an Eva Home system. We've done Eva Home a long time now. This is our 10th year doing Honeywell Eva Home. So we have an Eva Home system set up with two zones on domestic hot water. So as you can see at the moment, with no power applied to the 230 volt connection there, the Eva Home is reading a resistance value which is giving it a temperature of 65 degrees. So if the Eva Home system is set to 60 or 50 or something around that temperature, then that would be a temperature satisfied, which you can see from the relay boxes. So we've got a boiler relay set up there and a domestic hot water relay set up here, that you can see that that has got a full shut off demand. So there is no demand for any of the boilers that it may be attached to that. If you had an open therm bridge, so there's another incompressing quick, if you actually had another open therm bridge, the open therm bridge would be in the off, off mode right now, okay? So if I plug this in here, so this replicates the mixer G cylinder calling for demand. So if I plug that in there, you've just heard the relay engage here, okay? So the relay's engaged. It's now given the cold sensor reading to the CS92A sensor, which then is going across to the Eva Home controller and the Eva Home controller has just updated with the cold temperature reading. So now Evo thinks that the cylinder is 29 degrees Celsius, but it has a temperature set point of 60. So Evo now is gonna go for demand, which you should be able to see. The relay boxes have just clicked on here. So this would be your zone valve relay box, and this would be the one attached to your boiler. So your boiler would now fire the, the heat from the boiler would be going via the motorized zone valve to the mixer G cylinder and then the mixer G cylinder would now be getting heated um, using with the top coil that's in the top of the mixer G cylinder okay so that would be going on Evo thinks there's demand so Evo's happy so he, if this was the open therm bridge oh just a quick point now this was the open therm bridge now the open therm bridge would be going for maximum demand so it would kick the boiler in and it would set it to a high temperature demand to recover the domestic hot water cylinder. Okay, so if I now shut off the um, demand from the heat pump interface, so this is the same as the mixed G cylinder turning off demand, that has now killed the 230 volts here. This is now reading the hot resistor temperature reading, which Evo Home has updated. You can see that's now gone to 65 degrees. And within 
I don't know, I think it's about 30 seconds, something like that, the boiler's gonna shut off. You'll see that with the green light on the boiler relay turn off. There you go, 30 seconds, bang on the nose that was. Um, so <clears throat> 30 seconds that's gone off. And then like I said, the motorized zone valve, if this was attached to one, just stays open momentarily um, after that. So the heat generator goes off, the pump is normally still running in the boiler, then this motorized zone valve is just capturing the last bits of energy that are in the boiler before then it shuts itself off. So anyway, so that is the heat pump interface working with the Evo Home system. Um, the only other technical bit I didn't mention, I don't think, was that the, we were using dip switches number nine to achieve the temperature swings that we were using the cold and the hot resistor banks. So if you are using the heat pump interface, you do need these on number nine. And then like I said, your Evo Home system can then be controlled perfectly using the Mixer G cylinder. Anyway, I hope that's helped. If you have any further questions about what I've discussed today, or you'd like to purchase a Mixer G cylinder, or you'd like to purchase an Evo Home system, or you'd like some advice, um, about what boiler works best with the Mixer G cylinders, then please, by all means, give us an email to sales at mwphs.co.uk. That's sales at mwphs.co.uk. Um, I've been Richard. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. If you hit the bell icon, next time I release a video like this, uh, you will it will flag up on your YouTube feed that I've um, that I've released the video. Uh, we do have a member section which we're about to launch on our website, which will have loads of technical content and videos within it, and you'll be able to see videos like this when they're released before anyone else gets the opportunity to. Anyway, thanks very much for watching my video. If you have any questions, like I said, please get in touch. And I've been Richard, and thanks for watching.